Hi, welcome to episode 31 of the Woodwind Doubling Channel. Today we're going to do a little basic primer on uh, microphones. I see so many saxophonists just really not knowing how to address basic microphones on stage. Uh, you really need to know which end to blow into, as it were. Uh, and I see that happen a bit in uh, YouTube videos. In fact, it was a friend's uh, YouTube video where he had uh, uh, sort of an odd mic placement. We'll talk about the specific mic later on just because it's, uh, it's a tricky one for some people. But let's get to it. Uh, the basics of microphones. Here we go. All right, so what we're going to start off with is probably one of the most ubiquitous microphones that you'll see around. Um, this is a, basically a handheld vocal dynamic microphone, vocal or instrument. Uh, this particular one is a Sennheiser uh, E835. Uh, very similar in usage, general uses to a Shure SM58 or SM57. You'll see mics like this put out for horns all the time on stages. So if you're appearing on a stage, say in a club somewhere, uh, concert hall, probably some kind of a microphone like this. Uh, dynamic microphones uh, work really well for live use and horns. They don't require any additional power like uh, condenser microphones do. And they're pretty straight ahead. Most people know you blow into this end. So if you have this set up on a stand, you want to have the mic placed in such a way that it's not right down your bell, but aimed in between the bell and your left hand. That way you're going to get the best pickup of the instrument overall. It's tempting to want to crowd your way into the microphone, jam it up like that. It's really not helping things. It has to pick up sound that radiates from all over the instrument. Otherwise, not going to be very useful. Simple, basic microphone. Now, there is a particular variant on this mic. It's uh, made by Sennheiser. It's an excellent microphone for saxophones. It's the MD-421. Now, because the MD-421 has a metal band that goes around the microphone here, it looks like uh, a side address mic, like a condenser mic that we'd use for recording. So I'll sometimes people see people try and blow into the side of the microphone. It's really not going to do any good because you want to be on the capsule there. Given that these mics have a cardioid pattern, in other words, they pick up more sound this way and less sound back here. They reject sound from the rear to reject feedback. If you're trying to blow into the side of a mic with a cardioid pattern, you're going to suffer from poor response and also uh, poor frequency pickup in a lot of ways. There's also a proximity uh, effect that happens with uh, uh, mics like this that have a cardioid pattern. The closer you play into the mic, the more low and high end you're going to get. It's kind of like a radio announcer effect. The closer you get into the mic, the more lows you hear in the sound. And that is tempting at some points to you know, beef up the bottom end of the sound. But again, can work against you because if you've got it buried in the bell and you hit a low B flat, that note is much more present than other notes and it really doesn't do anything musically for the balance. So there's, there's our basic dynamic mic. One of the other types of mics you're going to run into a lot, especially if you're doing recording, is a condenser mic. Usually something like a large diaphragm condenser mic. They actually work particularly well on saxophones. Uh, this is sort of a medium-sized example of one. I've used this for uh, recording myself uh, on voiceovers as well as recording saxophone. Now, again, this is a cardioid pattern mic. It picks up from uh, one side and it tends to reject sound from the other side. So problem that a lot of people run into with these is they address the wrong side of the mic. So it, again, it's a side address mic. So it's going to be sitting up and down like this, and you're playing into one of the sides of it. Trick is to know which side. If you look really closely at the microphone itself, you can see the little heart-shaped symbol. That's the cardioid symbol. That's the thing that tells you that this side of the microphone is where you want to be playing into. There are also microphones uh, of this type that will have varying patterns. For example, uh, they could have an omnidirectional pattern, not really useful for live sound reinforcement, but also but a very useful thing for recording. Uh, you'll find bidirectional mics, uh, which have equal pickup from both sides, uh, but, but tend to reject a little bit off axis. Uh, those are great for doing certain types of uh, stereo recording setups, if you're like uh, doing ambient stereo recordings. 
Uh, and then sometimes you may even find like a hypercardioid pattern, which is an even tighter, narrower pickup. And you have to be like really on the ball for that. Generally, those aren't as good for picking up woodwinds because our sound tends to radiate from all over the place. Brass players, all the sound comes out of the bell. So they just line up the bell with the thing and away you go. So that can be good for uh, brass players, a hyper pattern, uh, because they've got a very narrow range of sound that comes out of there anyways. So... These you'll usually see in uh, recording setups. Uh, they need phantom power, uh, generally anywhere from 12 to 48 volts. Um, and uh, that's, again, it's falling into the realm of professional sound men or recording engineers who usually be putting these out for. This is not something you're going to lug around to your local gigs and things like that. Now, the other type of microphone that a lot of players gravitate towards because of its convenience is the uh, clip-on bell mics, uh, something like the one I have here. Uh, this is a fairly inexpensive, uh, easily available one made by uh, Apex. I got it at Long McQuaid's, probably at a blowout sale. Uh, and it can be convenient for playing in clubs because um, you can move around with the instrument. You don't, you're not uh, nailed down to one place. Uh, they are condenser mics, which means, of course, you're going to run into the need for f either a battery box or phantom power. Uh, so if you're not sure about whether the club's soundboard actually has phantom, sometimes live mixing boards don't always have it or might not have it available on the channels that you're plugged into. Uh, so sometimes you'll end up taking like a 9-volt battery box or some other phantom supply with you to supply your own power. Um, I've not really run into the problem of not having power available for it, but it's one of these belt and suspenders things I never like to be without uh, some way of solving a problem. So these ones, again, uh, you can't play off mic. You're always on the mic. Uh, you can get wireless packs for them too, which means you can move around even a bit more. Uh, the same kind of rules apply in terms of aiming the mic. You don't want to jam it all the way down the bell like this. That's not very useful. You don't get an accurate representation of the sound of the horn. So pointing the microphone just sort of across the top of the bell so that you get it towards the keys is generally a pretty good tactic for getting decent sound out of this. So there you have it. There's a general roundup of uh, some of the microphones you might run into, uh, dynamic mics. Uh, condenser mics uh, and also uh, clip-on bell mics. Uh, I can certainly launch into a little bit more detailed uh, thing about uh, microphone setups. I mean I could tell you right now I'm using about three or four different ones in recording my videos and uh, we can also talk about miking in pits which is again a little different thing. It's kind of more like playing in a recording studio. Um, so there you go episode 31 of the Woodwind Doubling channel. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, hit the bell so you get notifications and new videos, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.